Welcome back. Well, Fairfax Media this week found a buyer for its regional radio stations put on the market back earlier this year. The sale to grant broadcasters will be completed later this month. No price was given. The company saying that the sale of its metropolitan radio stations is dependent on price. Well, James Manny, our co-host, has all the details. James, so finally a buyer for those regional radio assets of Fairfax. Yeah, I think it was about eight stations, um, a couple in um, South Australia, handful up in Queensland. I went to Grant Broadcasting, a uh, big player in regional radio. I think most mainland um, states they're in, also down in Tasmania. Seem to be very good operators, things they take over, they, you know, it's, um, you know, they watch the costs, very important when you're in regional radio these days. Probably network where you can, but um, all local breakfasts and stuff like that. No indication of, of price, but uh, what about the, the metropolitan assets? Will Fairfax buy, find a buyer for those city radio stations? Well, the, the, there's a bit of doubt whether they will or not. I mean, um, I think we had Greg Highwood on the show earlier this year and he said, look, if we can't find a buyer for what we think is a fair price, we'll, we'll keep the station. So, you know, without the regionals, it's, you know, it's, a, it's not a bad package. Perhaps they might sell off, you know, the Probably the odd one out is 96 FM in Perth, you know. Might be of interest to someone like um, ARN, perhaps, you know. Um, the rest the rest are, are quite, you know, and they're, they're maybe they're AM music stations, but I think it'd be hard to find a buyer for those. Um, so there's still a lot of talking to be going on. Um, Macquarie was the favoured um, buyer, John Singleton and, and his um, backers, but there's, just, there's been a bit of doubt whether, you know, they can sort of get their hands on the funds that's needed. It's you know, north of $200 million. Uh, it's a lot of money. In this climate. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Just staying in radio, DMG Radio's uh, created DMG Create. Yeah, it's a uh, cross-platform um, cross selling organisation under the sort of sales boss, Jenny Parks, has put it, got in some new sort of crack sales team under her, including a couple of uh, guys from programming background, I think Wade Kingsley and Andy Milne. So they're sort of looking for opportunities for, for sort of brand funded content, if you like, a little bit like we were talking to Steve about for TV. This is look doing it for radio. All right, let's just uh, turn to something where I guess there's a lot of uh, uh, brands involved, and that's the Kardashians and the, the big wedding, Kim Kardashian's wedding, of course, sure. held over the past couple of nights on E. Um, and InStyle uh, held a Twitter party um, uh, alongside this. How did it go? Yeah, well, they had um, Kim Kardashian's on their cover of the new edition of the magazine. Uh, I think it was out this week. That's there. They're selling it as the first interview with uh, Kim, I think, post the wedding. Um, so they thought, look, we'll get on social media, promote ourselves, and they thought, you know, they got a, I think, a Twitter party. I think what the deal is, you get a, a specific uh, Twitter handle, and then you you'll tweet out some stuff, and then you'll generate some some chat around it, you know, and they'll help promote their um, their magazine, you know, and it's good for E, I guess, helps promote the TV show, and and Kardashians, of course, very big big action on uh, on Twitter. How, how did this show actually rate as well? Uh, it did pretty well. Uh, the first night, I think it was the second most watched show on uh, subscription TV. Wednesday night, the second night, it was the third most watched show. Audience is around about 90,000 people, so it's, it's it's pretty good result, especially for E, which I guess isn't off there often up there at the top of the uh, rankings. And just going back to the, the Twitter side of it as well with InStyle, uh, any idea yet of, of just how much of a success that was driving, you know, interest? No, to be honest. I mean, we, we had a quick look. They got a bit of traffic. There was a bit of stuff going on, but I'm, we haven't sort of spoken to them since it happened to find out uh, their sort of uh, report on if they something they do often. Yeah. Uh, now, just turning to, to newspapers and magazines, the final edition of the News of the World, we've heard uh, about how much the, the donation is uh, that will go to those UK charities. Yeah, News International said at the time, look, we'll, when we close the paper, all the money raised from that final edition will go to charities. I think there's about four UK charities that will each get close to a million pounds each, so it's uh, probably not a bad result. Um, also, the Herald Sun here uh, releasing a new cookbook uh, featuring a lot of TV chefs. Yeah, it's a series of cookbooks. I think there's ten in the whole range. The deal is the first one goes out free, then the, the uh, others are promoted at a low price. I think it's two dollars ninety nine each. Sort of a win win for both parties. It will generate some interest in the cookbooks. They're stripped down versions of these guy uh, the cooks other books. I think you get about twenty five recipes. So it'll help sell newspapers because especially the first one you get a free cookbook or a chance to pick up uh, other editions. I think you'll need a uh, coupon to get the collect the whole set. 
food still so popular? Yeah, yeah, it's still selling, you know, still big on the chefs involved. I think there's Gary and George from MasterChef, uh, Donna Hay and Jamie Oliver are just three of the chefs they've got. I um, also want to ask you about Morrison Media. It's turned the, the Smith Journal from a biannual to a quarterly. Yeah, we've talked this about a couple of times on the show. You know, they've only been one issue so far, going to do just two a year. First one did very well, about 20,000 copies, um, so which is pretty good at the high end of the men's market. You're dealing with titles like GQ, uh, Men's Style or some of the competitors. So they've sort of gone and made it quarterly. Um, a lot of publishers would perhaps be tempted to go straight in and do it monthly, but a bit more careful Morrison Media. Just also some news from the regulator as well, the ACMA. It's released its annual report. Not happy with the telcos at all. No, it um, sort of the, seems to be the biggest part of their business at the moment. It's looking after complaints from consumers about telcos. They've put out a new sort of uh, consumer protection code of conduct, if you like. Um, they reported, look, the complaints about mobile phones are actually down in the last quarter, so it seems to be having some effect. Other things on their radar are anti-spam, you know, stopping people spamming. They've fined a number of people about that this year. And also the do not call register, you know, those uh, troublesome phone calls you get at home. At dinner time, yeah, generally. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just turn quickly now to the TV ratings. This is for week 41, starting with the free-to-air first. Uh, top there, of course, the NRL grand final for nine followed by uh, the ever popular pack to the rafters for seven uh, turning the page and seven news there at number six most watched uh, and also for Saturday and Sunday nights there for seven and X Factor also doing well so seven having quite a good week in week 41 yeah absolutely did very well for sure and let's just have a look at subscription TV for week 41 and James uh, this uh, we we are including uh, all of the, the sport as well now that the main football yeah this sort of are the you know, the, the normal season AFL and um, rugby league's finished, so we'll chuck in just a straight top ten. Still going to be dominated by football for a little while because the Rugby World Cup, of course, is still uh, getting some big numbers there. Yep, number one and two, uh, and uh, also featuring heavily here in the rest of the, the top ten as well. And Rove LA doing well there for Fox 8. That's a pretty good effort, isn't it? Getting up some pretty big audiences as some of those football games are getting. So, sort of drove to make that top ten. It's, uh, it's a, seems a good investment for the, uh, for the Fox 8. Now, research out this week, apparently uh, watching TV, <laughs> children watching TV isn't such a bad thing. It's not going to turn them into couch potatoes after all. Good news for us. <laughs> yeah, I think the specific listening. research came from the uh, Edith Cowan University in Western Australia. Um, I think the, they looked at if uh, a young kid watches TV, will it affect the amount of time he plays outside or the amount of time he watches will affect it? No, it doesn't apparently. So they still get in a similar amount of uh, general other free play time. There you sometimes. go, kids. So. <laughs> and it's good news for the sales teams of some of the uh, free-to-air channels, I guess. So if you're selling, um, or selling, or oh, and for subscription TV, you're selling kids shows. <laughs> That's right. They're, they're good to watch. Um, just with Foxtel, it's actually uh, announced well the return of a, another channel uh, for 2012, the FX channel. Yeah, I think FX was there in the early days of, of Foxtel. It was one of the options, but it's uh, it went off the platform. It's sort of been uh, rebranded internationally, it's in a lot of other territories, it's finally coming here. Uh, one of the big properties is a show about zombies, believe it or not, but uh, The Walking Dead it's called. Massive cult following in the US. I think the second series has just started, so it'll be one of their sort of big properties when the, I think the channel will kick off, I think it might be March next year, but it's still a little, little way off. Talking about cult following as well, or, or even bigger than cult following, I guess, and that's rugby. Uh, and Nine, I guess, seeing the success of the ratings and the success of the Wallabies has, has got serious about its coverage yeah, of the Yeah, they've got a World lot Cup. of criticism over the, probably over nearly every week until now about, you know, they've been delaying some shows. Um, last weekend they got a lot of stick for um, having a the, using the host broadcasters, which was some um, New Zealand commentators for a, the Australian game. So they've obviously looked, Australia's got through to the semis and they've had to rethink and thought, hello, oh, we need to do something here. So, <laughs> you know, it gets serious when Ken Sut Sutcliffe goes on location to read the, the Sydney Evening News. So they sent him over this week. He was there doing sports reports. And they've been uh, hired Ray Hadley, who's going to go over and call the, um, the match. I think it's on Sunday, Sunday evening this weekend. So that'll do some massive numbers. And it's interesting too. I mean, the game will be simulcast both on, um, 
on Nine and on Fox Sports. So those Fox Sports numbers have been holding up quite strong, despite the fact that you can also get it on uh, free to air. Uh, just turning as well, although football season, as you're mentioning, the NRL, the AFL's over, there is still a lot of sports around for for Yeah, news. I mean, a lot of the other codes wait till that. You know, the, the finals are over and then that next weekend they, they click into gear. So we've had NBL starting up, the A-League starting up. Um, the spring carnival racing gets serious big time. Um, and then we saw the Bathurst too. 1,000 did work out very well for seven. That was on the first footy free weekend. There's plenty of V8 supercar action still to come. I think Gold Coast uh, next weekend. And uh, there's the Sydney... Uh, Sydney event too, I think, in December. Staying with sports too, and a key uh, sports anchor, Bruce McAvaney's re-signed with Seven for the AFL, but he'll still be involved in the Olympics as well. Yeah, even though Seven's not a rights holder, Bruce is, you know, a big Olympics buff. He knows, you know, probably one of the top Olympic broadcasters in the world. So he's re-signed with new contract with Seven, so he'll stay on as their sort of key football commentator. But he'll work for the host broadcaster. I think he's going to call the swimming. Uh, not that we'll get to hear him here. But you'll call that for countries that just take the, uh, the, the feed from the host broadcaster. James, as always, great to talk to you about all the media news of the week. Thank you. Thanks, Brady. James Manning there, editor and publisher of Media Week. That's all we have time for this week. Thanks so much for your company.